spoiler. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, first of all, thank you all for coming to learn about a possum or possum. Well, we'll figure it out later. All right. Um, but thank you all for coming today. Like Willard said, my name's Cassie. Um, we also have Aaliyah over here. She's with us with Grandfather and Luke in the center as well. Um, but before I get started today with the presentation, like Willard said, um, although I want to believe you all came here for me, I'd be kidding myself to think differently. Um, I know y'all are here for Acorn. Um, she is resting right now. We'll talk more about Acorn, our ambassador animal at Grandfather, in just a while. Um, I will bring her out later in the presentation, but she is a younger possum and getting used to programming. So we're just going to let her sleep and do her thing, and then I will bring her out to show you all um, in just a bit. But before we get started, I am curious, um, when you saw this on Bram's website, when I encourage you to be like, heck yes, I am going to spend my Thursday learning all about opossums. What, I would love to hear from you all. Why are you here? What do you want to learn today? What do you want to clarify about the opossum? Um, or you just want to come to a cool place on a Thursday afternoon, I mean, I'm thankful I'm here. So um, if anyone would like to share what they want to learn more about, and hopefully I can touch on that in the presentation. If not, um, I'm sure Acorn can answer all your questions. Um, but if anyone would like to share, let me see. My friend has one living in her green house. <laughs> and, and I am in charge of that when she is away. I, I just sent her, I forwarded the email, and I said, you will not believe this, and the next thing I know, we're all three years. So. Okay, so um, house-sitting opossum greenhouse care. Yeah. All right, I will touch briefly on that. <laughs> Perfect, thank you for sharing. Um, yes, sir. In an inadvertent type of way, I set some food out on my desk one day. I had cooked eggs, mm -hmm. Yes, and we will talk about that closer to the end. Um, there are a lot of positives about having opossums in the area, um, but a lot to talk about with dog food as well and just naturally bring them into um, kind of human habitation as well. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, I will keep that in mind not to cook my eggs too long. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, I know I have some possums because I've seen them, and I know they eat ticks and I, mm -hmm. and other things that I really don't like. And so there's some, I have a bank uh, that leads up to my house. It's full of, very steep, full of woods, and they live down there. And I really want to have possums, uh, so I wondered what was the best stuff to put. I put out birds, I put out sunflower seeds at night, because I know there's various animals that come out at night. So I just put a few every night, and I would like to, you know, encourage them to come up and forage around my yard at night. I okay. Don't know if there was anything that's, which I don't know that is dog food good for them. I mean, what's, what is a healthy thing to put out for them? That's great, and we'll talk about that, but we're going to touch more on their habitat when it comes to encouraging possums to be around um, for their ecological um, purpose. Um, so we will touch on that in a little kind of different perspective. Um, Excuse me, sir, in the front row. Well, I had turned this on. It's okay, I know him. I can pick on him. Um, anyone else want to share? Yeah, go for it. One of my good friends, his mom lives in Wilmington, and they had their one of their chickens attack a possum. Oh, attack a possum. They uh, had taken it to a rehab center, 
and they gave them the option to rehab it at inside their house. So really? Now they have like a possible like, three legs. Um, so because they couldn't really sit back, because they couldn't really walk. Yeah. Well. Um, and I don't understand how you can just like have possum in a house, but it <coughs> seems very chill, and they, it's like, I just was wondering like, how why did they let people rehab them at home? Do you mind me asking, you might have mentioned this, what state your friend North is? North Carolina. North Carolina, interesting. Yeah. Um, yes, because it's not legal to have a pet possum. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad you didn't use your friend's name. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll talk about um, if we find an opossum um, outside, if it's injured, what to do with it, et cetera, just a little later on. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to go over a few things. If there's anything that I haven't touched on or you're like, wait a second, can you explain that a little better? Please let me know. I want this to be interactive um, for you all. So if you all have any questions at any point, just raise your hands um, or yell it out. I am good with either. Um, but we'll get started so you all can see our incredible um, opossum acorn. But just kind of an overview of what we're going to be going over today is I'm going to talk a little bit about the origin of the name opossum. Where did it come from? Um, and then we're going to actually kind of figure out, is it opossum or possum? Um, some general information about these incredible animals. And then, um, I love, this might sound crazy, but their reproduction is so incredible. So we're gonna touch on that too. Um, and just talk about why opossums are so incredible to be in our ecosystem to have around. Um, so that's kind of how the layout's gonna go today. But like I said, I'm super flexible. If you wanna spend more time talking about one thing versus another, just pause me and let me know and we'll go from there. Any questions? No? All right. So, I know. <laughs> um, so, opossum. So, the word opossum was first used in the Western culture in 1608 by Captain John Smith. Now, the name possum was originally used in 1613 by a British botanist named Sir Joseph Banks. Now the word opossum, it does not come from the Western culture. Opossum comes from an Algonquin term. Um, and the Algonquin term means white and dog small animal or white beast. Um, and then through a process, because our English dialect is so incredible and just makes complete sense, um, what happened through a process called a phasis, the O of the opossum was dropped and later known to be possum. Um, so the Algonquin term eventually settled into opossum, but have, let me see, raise some hands. Have we used opossum, possum interchangeably? Okay, yeah. Um, so let me see, I just want to, take kind of see where we're at um, and it's okay either way you can argue after the presentation but let me see can I I'm gonna take a little vote is it opossum or possum if you think it's opossum I encourage you to raise your hand mm -mm, okay if you think it's possum I encourage you all to raise your hand if you think it's none of the above, <laughs> raise your hand. Um, so you all were correct. Opossum, possum. However, depending on where you are at, kind of like tomato, tomato, there are differences. So opossum, like Willard was saying, is North America's only marsupial. Um, the opossum and if I have anyone that's really good with um, scientific language, didelphimorphia order. Did I say that correct, sir? <laughs> She's calling me out. I'm not 
<laughs> so the opossum is a part of this order, and this order includes one family, but over 60 species in this family. Um, most of these species occur in Central and South America, except for North America's only opossum, and that is the Virginia opossum. So here in the States, if you see an opossum, it is an opossum. Um, however, has anyone been to Australia, um, New Zealand? Nice. Ma'am, do you mind me asking if you raise your hand for opossum or possum? I said possum. Possum, you were correct. Okay. Because in Australia and New Zealand, the possums um, over on that side um, are part of the Diprodontia order. Now in this order, there's 10 families and it includes 117 species. Now this is the largest order of marsupials and it includes kangaroos, possums, wallabies, and other relatives as well. Um, so, like I said, um, we will talk about some of the differentiations of these opossum versus possum, but simple clarification in the United States, you're not gonna get yelled at by anyone by saying possum, but it is an opossum in the order in Australia and New Zealand is possum. So now when you're having a, a family get together, um, you all can debate and you can bring up the science behind it as well. Um, does anyone have any questions about the differentiation? Yeah. Is there any difference in lifespan for ours versus what's in Australia? Um, lifespan, I'm not sure about. Some of their features are different. I know some of the Australian species are bigger, so I don't know. The lifespan in the, of the Virginia opossum is fairly short, um, but it is short mostly due, the average is due because of human impact. So I don't know sort of the research um, about that, but I, that's something I'd like to look into and learn more about. I have a follow-up. Yes, please do. Um, why is it illegal is it illegal in Australia? Well, it's a, to keep them as pets, is that clarify? So it's different state by state in the United States as well. In North Carolina, it is illegal to have them as a pet, um, to raise them as a pet. I'm not saying, there's a lot of individuals that find a baby opossum um, and want to nurture it and help it out. Of course, that's, our, that's human nature to help out. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't done much research into um, the possum um, order in Australia, um, but that's great information. I will, if you maybe give Willard your contact and I can look it up or get some more information about it, I'd love to, I'd love to learn more about it and get back to you about it. Yeah, awesome. Let me see, anyone else? What yes. is the lifespan of the possum or opossum here in North Carolina? Yeah, so the average lifespan, does anyone happen to know? One to three. One to three, one to three, one to two um, yes. years, yes, years old. Acorn right now, she's going on about a year old. Um, mostly due to their short lifespan is due to um, human impacts. Willard mentioned, what was it, a speed bump? Yeah. A road bump? Appalachian, Appalachian road bump, um, speed bump. And... Um, natural predation from other animals as well. Yeah. What about lifespan and captivity? Lifespan and captivity, um, still about one to two, one to, it can push on to the three too. They have, we'll talk about in their reproduction, but they have the shortest gestation period of any um, mammal in North America. Um, so they reproduce quickly and I, I don't like to say like, well, one bumps out, one bumps in. But um, it's a possum cycle right there. And what is the gestation period? It's about 11 to 13 days. I know. Imagine that life. Um, <laughs> awesome. Let me see. All right. So general information, this is what I find super cool. 
Um, the opossum is one of the oldest mammals on record. Um, there are records that have been shown that opossums lived with the dinosaurs 70 million years ago. Um, so, like I said earlier, the opossum is native to central and southern United States. Um, the opossum was thought to not have expanded westward until the Great Depression. Does anyone have any ideas maybe why the opossum um, during the Great Depression expanded westward? Yeah, as a food source during the Great Depression. Um, their range is expanding northward, um, but into Ontario, Canada, but their northern expansion is limited due to frostbite and starvation. Um, opossums, their home range, um, their home range can be anywhere to 50 to 300 acres. And they're not territorial except for the males. Sometimes the males can be territorial, but more than likely opossums will have an overlapping home range as well. Um, so let me hear from you all. I know we have an opossum living in a greenhouse, um, opossum on the front porch, correct? Where else have we seen opossums? Maybe um, in the local area or around your home? Backyard. Backyard. You're a bird feeder. Bird feeder. Uh, and I had one a couple of years ago that hung out in a dogwood tree. And every Ooh. time I walked past, she hissed at me. And I would explain that she did not pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, in trees, that's where I see them a lot, too. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes, running across the road. They are nocturnal. We'll talk about their vision and other senses in a while, too. Yeah, so opossums, they preferably like a deciduous woodland with a water source nearby, so maybe hence why your bird feeder, or bird, bird, bath. bird bath, yeah. Um, so a bird bath, but they're extremely adaptable. So they like to make their homes in abandoned animal dens. They also like to live in hollow logs, brush piles, wood piles, and of course, man-made structures. So coming back to your question at the beginning, attracting possums, um, providing that brush pile for them to ha um, make a habitat in or den in overnight, um, opossums don't den in the same den every night, except the females when they have young with them. There's a potential for them to den in the same den every night. Um, but just making the habitat more welcoming. Bird baths, um, because they need that water source as well, is something that can attract possums or detract possums. If you do not want possums, um, just remove all the brush and any man-made structure that you think they might want to den in and any water source at night. So if you have a dog to remove that water source, um, if they're an outside dog as well, or cat, or et cetera. Um, let me see, and with their denning, because they don't den um, in the same location every night, opossums are known to be opportunistic omnivores. Um, they eat just about anything. Um, their long muzzle, if you'll see in the picture when I bring acorn out, allows them to detect, di, um, find insects and other creatures as well. Um, they even love to seek out venomous snakes, um, which is a great adaptation that possums have. And of course they love, love, love the garbage. Um, so they'll eat just about anything, and they're able to eat just about anything because the opossum has the most teeth out of any mammal in the United States. All right, so how many teeth does the adult human have? Thirty-two. That sounds about right to me. Um, I'm glad I asked you all <laughs> because I know how many teeth an opossum have, but I'm very embarrassed to say I don't know how many teeth I have. Um, um, opossums, does anyone 
Want to throw out a guess how many teeth an opossum has? 52. 52. Oh, Martha, you're so close, but you overbid it. 50. <laughs> 50. Yep. Yeah. Opossum has 50 teeth um, in order to find and eat all their food. Um, perfect. Um, so like I said before, their average lifespan, um, about one to two years. Um, their natural predators here in North Carolina could be bobcats, can be foxes, um, great horned owls can be a natural predator for an opossum as well, especially a younger opossum. Um, these animals, um, contrary to the belief, they do not hibernate. They are less active during the winter, <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> um, I know I am. So they are less active during the winter, but they do not hibernate. Um, when I bring acorn out, I would love for you all to notice her vision as well. Um, opossums, they're not blind. Um, they do have very poor vision, um, and that's why they're nocturnal animals. But usually when an animal um, lacks a strong um, sensory kind of like vision, they make up for it elsewhere. So opossums, in order to communicate, they use auditory and scent signals. Um, they also have a very good sense of hearing as well. And then along their muzzle, they have long, um, long whiskers called vibracia that helps them to navigate more in the dark as well. Um, so although their eyesight is not great, they do have other adaptations that help them survive in the wild. Um, let me see, who said they found a possum in a tree? Yeah, um, so they are incredible tree climbers. You will notice they have, a, they call it the third lake. Um, their tail, their tail is about one third of their entire body length. Um, and it's used to help them climb. But opossums do not hang upside down from trees. They can actually only use their tail to hold on for a short period of time. Um, and not a long period of time. But their claws um, help them climb as well. And on their hind leg, they have an opposable thumb that also helps them climb um, to um, rest or avoid predators, things like that. I have seen Arabella climb down units in my greenhouse head uh -huh. first. Oh, yeah. And that amazed me. I had never seen anyone. She's just as comfortable going head first mm -hmm. as she is. Yeah, sometimes when acorn, she'll get on my back, mm -hmm. um, but then she'll walk head first down my arm. But she's more of a cuddler and not a floor dweller as well. So we'll see what she does today. Um, let me see. All right, playing possum. <laughs> One of my favorite games. All right, you learn the rest. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so playing a possum, we've heard of it. Has anyone ever witnessed it before? Arabella. Yes? <laughs> Would you all like to speak on your playing a possum um, experience? You don't have to. I'd like to. I, um, <laughs> there was one in a trash can in the bottom of the trash can. And I had the maintenance person go to dump it out. And was it here? It was at my uh, oh. prior <laughs> and they went to dump it out, and of course it started hissing, um, but not at first. At first it just stayed really dead, and you know, you poked it before you dumped it, and all that, and finally he really goes to dump it, and that's when it sort of stopped playing the It took a lot. Yeah, it, it, it does. <laughs> Did you want to share it all? You don't have to. It's the same thing. Same thing. I saw it in my yard. <laughs> I didn't get real close. I had to live three feet. And mm -hmm. then I went back to my house and I watched. And it slowly, it like metamorphosed back to life. Almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. I, I wish I had that adaptation some days at work. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yes, playing a possum. Did you want to share on your experience at all? I didn't want to exclude well, every, you. <laughs> Sorry. Every girl was taking a nap in a hanging basket of uh, philodendron, and I had brought her some grapes. And, and 
typically because she does have 50 very sharp teeth. And I do pet her, but I, I have a magic wand, of course, and I put fruit on the end of it, and that's how I give her her fruit. And, oh, okay. And I had stuck a grape, you know, mm -hmm. and then there was a noise, a crash, and it startled her. So she woke up for the fruit, and then she heard the crash. And immediately, she was sitting up, and immediately she just fell over <laughs> like it was a dramatic routine. <laughs> and I kind of poked her, and it took her, I guess, about a minute and a half, and she sort of did that. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, came back around. Mm -hmm. But it was, it was funny to see. Yeah. Because it was just a thud. <laughs> Well, you all might have not known, but opossums, when they're in the pouch for, um, to continue developing, they actually go to theater school um, <laughs> to learn how to play possum. Um, no, but playing a possum, it's an involuntary state that possums go into when they sense fear. They will look and um, smell like dead animal. What they do is they bar their... Um, uh, lips back and they show their teeth um, and they will also emit not such a good scent out of themselves as well um, and eventually they will come back into a state of consciousness but it's super important for us to take care and respect them um, if we find an opossum in that state <laughs> Um, and if they went to theater school and did really well, A+, plus, um, they will eventually come out of that state. We just have to give them some time while they're in that state. Yeah? So they don't make a conscious choice to play a possum. Mm -mm. And if you come up to them, and let's say I went up and I like kicked it, it can't make a conscious choice to come out of that state. Mm -mm. And they will come out of that state and then come back. Neurologically, I don't, I don't know what happens. I know it's from the sense of fear. But it is involuntary, um, which is incredible to think about. Um, yeah, I'm actually not sure about the transition out of the out of the state of playing possum. So I would have to look into that even more. I'm curious if they were in a safe place when they went into that state, if they might feel if their bodies come out. I wonder if the stress level that is imposed that triggers that response has an impact on how long they are in that state. So you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm mishearing, but the greater the fear, the longer they're in that I wonder, state? I wonder. That's something I would love. There has to be some research yeah. on. I'd love to look into it. Yeah. I'm sorry. You, yeah, go for it. I was going to ask for you there, if there was some general amount of time that they would typically play possible. I don't, I haven't come across anything, general amount of time. I don't know if anyone else um, in the room has any knowledge about it, um, but I haven't come across anything. So do they actually change their physiological state when they're doing that? That doesn't seem like a very good strategy. <laughs> I mean, if something's going to eat you, that you'd want to, you know, I mean, I don't mind playing dead. But I'd want to wake up and move pretty quickly if something was deciding that it was going to eat me anyway. From what I read, and I don't know if anyone's heard differently, please correct me if I'm wrong, but when they're playing dead, that um, the scent they secrete out is um, definitely not Bath and Body Works brand by any <laughs> means, um, or a local art artesian blend or anything. Um, but what I've heard, it smells so bad that it will deter, like, dogs away as well. So I don't, I think in that state, they're just <laughs> so repulsive that nothing wants to come up to them. But then you think um, scavengers, like vultures, like, heck yeah, you smell great. <laughs> um, so that's on the reverse side, too. This is all making me think more and um, making me wish that Acorn could speak um, for herself, <laughs> but she cannot. That's interesting because when Arabella fell over and mm -hmm. played dead for me, she did not emit any kind of scent whatsoever. Interesting. Yeah, and she wasn't out that long, literally about a minute and a half. Maybe, maybe because it, maybe you're onto something. Yeah, um, that might have been. And I read about a lot of weird things, but this is one of the weirdest and coolest things that I have 
recently read about and it is opossum reproduction. Um, so opossums can start um, um, with their reproduction and they begin anywhere between um, mating between December to late October with most of the births happening between February and June. Now the Virginia opossum will have about one litter a year, but in warmer climates, opossums can have anywhere between two and some three, but mostly um, average of two. But the Virginia opossum usually has one litter a year. Like I said earlier, their gestation period is only 11 to 13 days. Um, now, a female opossum, get ready for your mind to be blown, um, well, at least mine is, um, can have up to 20 babies in a litter. Now, that is the max. Um, on average, they have about eight to nine per litter. litter. Um, a female opossum has 13 teats, so if she were to have um, any more than 13 babies, it's basically survival of the um, fittest once they move from the birth canal to the pouch. Um, whoever can latch on to um, a teat first has the chance of survival. Um, when an opossum is born, it is about the size of a honeybee, or if you look up on the picture, it's about the size of a dime. Um, so as soon as they are born, what they do is they move from the birth canal into the pouch where they continue to develop for about two months. Um, once they get old enough to move out of the pouch after about two months, that's when they transition onto the mother's back where they'll stay for about two to four months depending on size and development. Um, let me see. Quick question. Mm -hmm. And you've got the perfect picture for it. Yeah. The babies have black eyes, and I noticed on Arabella when she was that size, because that's exactly what I saw in my backyard before I Okay. Uh, and they have like the dark lines that go up, and they also have gray that comes way down their muzzle. Mm -hmm. But the adult possum is all white. Is that tied to shifts in their ability to see, and does it have to do with protecting their eyes from uh, really bright light when they're young, and maybe more reflectance when they're older, which might improve their ability to hunt and see in the dark? If I were to, um, I don't know for certain, oh, okay. the coloration, um, Acorn is here because at Grandfather Mountain because she her eyes open too soon and caused a decrease in vision. So what you just said, ma'am, in my my head that makes a lot of sense. But through the developmental process, I'm not sure about the coloration and how it. Yeah, but you can see right mm -hmm. here how they go from the. Yeah, especially right here. Yeah. <laughs> From Cleopatra to Queen Elizabeth I. There we go. <laughs> um, yes, I would have to. I have to look more into that. Yeah, I never. I never even. I don't even know if I took much notice in that coloration there. Um, but um, just to put it in perspective, so it's being born about you know the size of a honeybee or a dime, they weigh anywhere between about 0.13 of a gram, um, so super small. But once they go into the pouch, in just one week, they'll triple in size and their weight will increase tenfold. Um, so it's pretty, pretty quick development once they're in the pouch and when they go onto um, their mother's back as well. Um, the mom, when they're on their back, um, communicates um, to them with um, clips, clicks, lip smacking, and some even um, refer to it as bird sounds as well with their mother. Um, the male does not stick around um, to help rear the babies at all. It's all, on, um, all up to the mother. Do they nurse while they're in the pouch and then also while they're on the back with the mother? Um, they nurse in the pouch, and I don't believe they nurse once they go onto their back. Mm -hmm. That very well might be the stage where she's teaching them the forage. Mm -hmm. And I think um, 
Yeah, she gets she provides the food once they're on the back, from what I'm I'm familiar with. Um, I have not. I'm going to bring acorn out in just a minute, but our keepers at grandfather said that acorn has one of the nicest pouches they ever seen in a opossum. <laughs> um, take that as you will. Um, I did not have them elaborate on what they meant by that by any means, um, but yes. Let me see. Does anyone have any questions before I bring Acorn out? Yeah. If she's 40, does that mean she might bring a bunch of food mm -hmm. in one spot and they would get off of her and they just eat right there? Yeah. Um, I don't, a lot of um, possums, and I'll talk about this in a little, that are brought into a rehabilitation center are mostly the ones found alongside the road because their mom was hit. Um, that's where we found, or not myself, but Acorn was located along the side of a road. Um, so that might have been during a foraging process um, that that could have happened. Yeah? How long does it take them to reach adult size? Adult size, they are in the pouch for about two, two months and then go on the back to about two to four months. And then, um, I guess it depends on adult size. Acorn is not going to get any bigger, and she's almost a year. Um, however, our last opossum ambassador animal at Grandfather was a lot bigger opossum. Um, so I think it just it depends on their diet and things like that. But what do you to feed them? at Grandfather. Right. They, um, a possum, so the keepers at Grandfather um, provide um, a variety of food. Like I said, they're opportunistic eaters. So a lot of um, leafy vegetables, um, fruit, vegetables, and insects. I don't believe at Grandfather Acorn has gotten any mice. Um, in the wild, they can eat mice and rats. Do you know anything else about Acorn's diet? Yeah, they switch it up so she doesn't get bored. Any animal that is, um, can't be released back into the wild, they want to make sure they have a diet that's ever-changing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my freshman year, one of my philosophy uh, students, when I was in that major, uh, found a, possum in a, a baby possum in a storm drain. And he like, literally crawled into the storm drain and got it out, um, like, took care of it for a week. And then I, the semester ended, so I had no idea what would happen. Where should we take or like report an animal to if we come across an animal that can't take care of itself? That's a great question. So in this area, um, Mays Rehabilitation Center with Lise McRae, you can give them a call. If an opossum looks injured, always call for. Um, Rehabil a rehabilitation center in your area. Um, if they, these are the guidelines that I will tell you. If you find a possum and they don't look injured at all, but they are eight inches from the nose to the tail, not including the tail, and of course everyone has um, like a food scale that they carry around with them. So if they weigh 200 grams or more, they can survive without their mom. Um, but I was, oh, <laughs> but I was thinking about that. I'm like, okay, so I see this wild opossum. Oh, I'm gonna go take my ruler up to it. All right, eight inches. Get my food scale out that I keep in my back pocket. Two hundred grams. Yeah, you're good. Um, I just encourage everyone just to call the closest re rehabilitation center. Mm -hmm. Are rabies associated? With Ooh, that is a great question. Um, what was the question? I don't think so. Are rabies. No. So, no, right? they are not. So opossums are incredible. The Opossum Society, which I don't know why I'm not a part of yet, but I, I, it's, I yeah, it's, well, it's on the, um, the awesome World Wide Web. Um, 
provides us a little information. They're nature's little sanitation engineers. Um, so a possum, because of their lower body temperature and incredible immune system, they don't contract rabies. Um, and this, isn't, this is the majority. There's not to say there isn't any incidents, but rabies and then other common diseases that you might have in your pets, they can't contract those diseases. And like I said earlier about the snake venom, um, they are not affected by um, venomous snakes at all. They have this protein in their blood, and I'm gonna read it so I'm not mis, um, mis telling you all, but it's called a lethal toxin neutralizing factor that makes them resistant to snake venom. Um, and in the science world, scientists are actually using this information to learn more about how to treat humans with snake bites. Um, as well. But um, along with that, so it's, I mean, if you see an opossum, you don't have to fear as like seeing a raccoon, right? Um, that's maybe out when it's not supposed to be out, diurnal, um, because they don't contract rabies. Um, but what they do, um, they do like to bring in, okay, all right, who loves ticks? No, oh, okay, I don't either. Um, but that's why I do love opossums because opossums will eat 96% of the ticks they encounter while grooming themselves in a year. So these are not ticks, they're a bean, um, so no, no worries. But if anyone were to take an S, this is like the game we play at a housewarming party or a, uh, some type of shower. But if you were to guess how many ticks in here that a possum eats a year, does anyone have any guesses? I'll take that I'm done. Willard. Um, the beans are, um, I, I guess, uh, the size of a honeybee, a baby opossum. No, they're a little smaller than that. Willard, how many do you think? 5,000 5, is absolutely correct. An opossum can eat 5,000 ticks a year. Um, so I always encourage folks, you know, sometimes opossums might not be the most attractive, right? But the way, I mean, everyone's different. If y'all are here at an opossum talk, you might think differently. Um, but 5,000 ticks a year, and I just think that is on an ecological perspective, I am super thankful for it. Um, but um, yes, awesome. Yeah. Do you have a photo of what their scat looks like? Um, oh, I do not. Um, I do not have a picture. In the greenhouse, it looks like a cat. <laughs> a cat? Yeah, it looks like a little kitty food. A cat? A cat, like a house cat? Yeah. Uh -huh. I might be able to at the end, if Will, if you're okay with me using it and pull it up online to show you all or show you if you just want to come up after, we can take a look together because um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty what curious. Weight, what's an average weight of an adult possum? An average weight of adult possum, um, let's see, 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 let's see,
She was found along the side of a road um, and was taken to um, Mays Wildlife Rehabilitation Center. <laughs> Hello, acorn, wakey, wakey. <laughs> All right, time to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say something for the camera? Yeah, I'll bring her around. If y'all don't want me to get close, just let me know. She does. <laughs> so when she was found, um, she was found alongside of the road. And um, like I said earlier, she wasn't supposed to have her eyes open yet. And these are the um, um, vibracia I said that was around her muzzle. She is much more receptive to, I, I love working with kids. I, I'll be honest, I don't work with adults a lot, but she is, if you can imagine, much more receptive around adults versus a bunch of uh, very excited sixth graders. <laughs> um, but when she had her eyes open, she had a bunch of maggots in her eyes. Um, so that is what decreased her vision um, and deemed her unreleasable. So is her hair coarse or soft? soft. It's soft. Um, it looks coarse. It's, I would, unfortunately, we can't have anyone touch them yet with the... The tail's in the pocket there. <laughs> We're connected forever. <laughs> I'd rather her be in the pocket instead of on my back because then I might be coming around in a not a nice position to you all. <laughs> Look at her little finger. Um, a little. A little finger. Yeah. So they have claws on all of their feet except on their on their um, one of their um, hollocks and it has a nail. Oh, and her ears just Look at the little paw here. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> oh, is she looking? Oh. I hope she yawns for you all so because. You all 51 of your teeth. You yes, so huh? You're doing it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's a cat harness. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't worry about her getting nervous and playing dead and smelling while you're carrying her around. Um, you know, I really haven't thought about it until you just <laughs> mentioned it. Um. But, you know, I am a naturalist, and I can't say that, you know, the naturalist department smells the best anyway because we're outside all day yeah. um, to begin with. I love how her tail is, like, pushed I know. Pocket. She's doing, I'm going to give her some props right now. She's doing really well. Uh, how is it all? Do you groom her? Um, she grooms herself. I don't believe habitats groom her at all. Um, it's funny because, um, so we have one keeper in Habitats, awesome, um, loves, I mean, of course, everyone loves Acorn, um, but she, <laughs> she has one of those hooded pockets of her sweatshirt, so when she was a little younger, and I think even now still, during like lunch, you'd come down to their office, and Acorn's just in her, in her pocket, and she's just eating spaghetti like, like she doesn't have an acorn in her pocket. How much larger are the males versus the females? Um, not con like not considerable compared to some other mammals, um, especially like black bears and things like that we have on the mountain. Um, she so she was brought to grandfather October twelfth, twenty twenty one. Estimated birth in June 2021. Um, so math is not doing me so <laughs> so strong right now, but almost, what was that? Ten months, Ten months yes. What, I don't know what month we're in. Can I help you? And... Um, <laughs> oh, 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> she is. <laughs> Don't cry. It's happy cries, right? It is happy cry, yeah. I'm just glad she's not on my back. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, from my knowledge, um, Acorn definitely likes being held a lot more. Other opossums that have been at grandfather um, were more like to just go on a walk, um, but I don't know, Acorn's kind of living that nice, nice life. She, uh, she, so she likes you. <laughs> and we're not to touch her. Unfortunately, not just with our animals. Um, at Grandfather, um, opossums, if they can't contract rabies, I hope they can't contract um, COVID. I don't think there's been a lot of scientific research into it. I, who knows? Um, but I know our cats on the mountain can contract um, COVID, so we're just extra cautious right now. So were you saying that when they're born, when they're the size of a dime, mm -hmm. then they migrate immediately mm -hmm. to the pouch? pouch. Mm -hmm. And they'll latch onto a teat where they'll um, continue developing to about two to four months. Does the mother place them, or do they do that themselves? They do them that they do that themselves. That's why they, if they have more than thirteen, it's like one of those reality show games. I feel like in the pouch, if that's how I were to imagine it. Do they just hold on with your claws under her back? Mm hmm Yeah. I'm pretty sure Shilly's gonna fall asleep again. But their claws are they are relatively I mean, not sharp that they would hurt me by any means, but they are they are tough if you were to feel them. Does she know you over other people? Do you handle her more? Um I don't. She I would say are so I am an educator on the mountain. Um, I don't do their personal care. Um, I don't, um, that's our habitats team. I would say habitats, um, they're probably more familiar, especially with Deborah, who, based, that's an individual that likes to eat her pasta with the possum. <laughs> and now, possum or opossum? Quiz time. <laughs> opossum in North Carolina. There we go. <laughs> well, Arabella and I've talked about that, and she prefers. <laughs> but you know I've had that question before I don't know if they're more used to the people or if it's more because they have that good sense of hearing maybe a voice recognition type thing mm -hmm. um, like a sound recognition what about smell smell these long um, whiskers on their um, face um, do they do have a good sense of smell, and that helps them as well. What do I smell like? Does anyone else have any questions? I had a question, but I can't remember because I'm just... <laughs> oh, my God. If y'all want, um, I can, I'll stay up front with her. If y'all want pictures with her, um, I'll hold on to her. So you're you definitely uh, have me in the picture as well, unfortunately. But... Um, <laughs> I've never seen one, you know, other than running across the road. Yeah. Until recently, we let our dog out, like we do at night. She's a little terrier mix. And my husband heard her barking like crazy. So he goes out and he sees this, an opossum. Uh-huh. And so then I guess it played dead. Uh-huh. And because Izzy, it, she gets a mole or anything else. She doesn't care. She'll put it in the mouth. That's why, you know, I was there reading about it after. It's like it probably was the scent. Yes. That, and so when she, that Ben was able to get her and bring her in, and then she was gone. Ah. So she played dead, and when we went back out, she was gone. Um, but people have said you see them in trees. Mm -hmm. So when would you, I've not really thought to look around the trees, because we have a lot of trees in our mm -hmm. Where, 
What time of day are you talking about? When I've seen them in trees, it's all been at nighttime. Okay. Mm -hmm. So during the day, they're in a den somewhere? I would say they're denning. They yeah. might be in trees as well, but more or less, um, they probably just in their den. So you could walk around your yard at night? Mm -hmm. And that's when I've seen them in trees in the wild. Do you know the penalty for breaking the law? Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know the penalty. I, I can't say... What are the penalties for um, keeping a possum as a pet? Um, is it? Yeah. I don't know how it's regulated. I can't imagine that it's regulated too strongly. to say that like our wildlife officers aren't keeping I just I feel like if you have an opossum in your house you have an opossum in your house yeah. Yeah. Um. Hmm. my one neighbor was thinking um, another neighbor's dog kept getting into their compost but we have tons of raccoons and in the nicest way possible. I was like, I don't know if it's a dog. Mm -hmm. It might be. Mm -hmm. So snuggly. <laughs> she really as gentle as she seems? Um, I'll be honest. This is, um, I don't know if she's like, looked on the calendar today and was like, okay, Bram, I may better make sure that I have it together. Um, she is great, but um, every time I have previously programmed with Acorn, she has been on my back <laughs> um, and trying to not be super. She's great, but um, me trying to answer questions bent over and walking around, this is much more enjoyable. <laughs> um, so uh, biggest biggest takeaway, right? Um, I believe these individuals, they serve such an important role in our ecosystem, um, managing population, the tick population. But, you know, I feel like they are underappreciated in some ways. Um, so any way that we all can share the cuteness of this opossum. <laughs> What'd she do? Oh, uh, do it again. I'm sorry, I'm just talking about she sneezes the whole way. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I appreciate your program, but should we not clap so that we don't scare her? Um, you can stop fingers. Um, yeah, a little tiny clap. I think she's pretty zen right now. Yeah. Um, so if you all would, if I will be, a, I appreciate you all coming. Like I said, if I didn't get the answers to the questions you had before, you feel comfortable leaving a contact with Willard or someone else here at Bram that I can talk to our Habitats team and get back to you on, I would love to do. And one of the things I'm questioning is because of the size of the babies, do they ever come with the mother when the mother feeds riding on the back that way? And if so, um, I've been doing it wrong and I need to relocate 
some of that so that they would have easier access. And you also said you would address dog food for them. Oh, dog food. Um, I, let me. So if you don't want opossums in the area um, around your location, remove the dog food. I don't know if it um, hurts their digestive system, but it does bring them into a human population where there's a higher chance of them potentially getting hit by vehicles depending on where you live. Um, so will they eat it? Absolutely. Um, does it harm their digestive system in any sort? I don't know. Um, Anything that's n not natural could potentially, but then you see him eating a bunch of trash, which could have microplastics in it as well. So on the other side of that, is dog food better than potentially microplastics and trash? Yes, if they are limited with their food source. Um, so for myself to give you an answer, is it bad or not bad? I'm not gonna tell you right or wrong. Um, I guess my big thing is anytime they get something unnatural, it's just not part of their lifestyle, even though it, I mean, it's habituated in. They do seek out dog food, trash. Um, it's just our, our society. It's, you know, humans are, um, you know, taking over a lot of environments where possums can live and they need that food source um, because there might not be one in the area. Um, does that, I know it's not a clear-cut cookie answer by any means. It, 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 it tells me exactly what I need to know. My last question would be on the Beverly Hillbillies, and Granny always used to, about having possum, possum and grits, possum and whatever. Uh -huh. Do any cultures eat possum still today? Or? <laughs> I feel like that's a maybe a no comment one as well. <laughs> um, I. So I grew up in Pennsylvania, Western Pennsylvania, um, and I know some of my uh, Southern uh, members and, um, I'm trying to say this. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know particularly if there's any culture. I would say there's individuals or families that still, um, that still consume possum. recipes. If you look at the Foxfire Book of Appalachian Cookery, they have a recipe for possums with sweet potatoes. Oh. Roast possum with sweet potatoes. It's supposed to be good. But you have to finish them off with good food. Same thing with raccoon, you know, because they eat a lot of carrion and a lot of trash and stuff like that. So if you catch one, you put it in a pen and then feed it things like leafy greens and fruit and stuff for a couple weeks to flush it out. Does the cookbook have the mild, medium, or Spicy opossum seasoning, though. <laughs> awesome. Um, it was a basic ingredient in Brunswick stew. Oh. And, and it was an all night. And, and traditionally, you always, uh, when you had a barbecue, and it was an all night event because you had half a hog that you would cover it, you know, oh. do the fire, and then you throw on a box spring and burn everything off its metal. And then all night long, you turn that half hog and you mop it. And at the same time, huh. you have a big pot of Brunswick stew going. Now, we didn't always have Brunswick. I mean, we didn't always put possum in the Brunswick stew, but I know that that was considered a prime ingredient, and it's off my diet. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a potential that Acorn's going to have nightmares tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'm just she kidding. Good, yeah, she probably she sneezed and she's like, uh-uh. It's interesting because her coloration is so different mm -hmm. from Arabella's. She's very dark. And Arabella's tail only has black about an inch and a half down. And I've, this is over halfway. That someone else mentioned that the other day when we were bringing out the opossum, the tail coloration. Um, yeah, I didn't I don't know if it's an adaptation depending on or it's just how I have blonde hair and Aaliyah has a dark, darker hair. 
That's all, all interesting. She is. They're all special. I just think they're such wonderful. <laughs> they are. Yeah, but now y'all can um, go home and be like, oh my gosh. Well, I got to see really cool art and an opossum all in the same day. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and I know, as long as I have a possum there, I will not have a, I won't have a possum. Yeah. Nice. They're valiant warriors. Do you hear that, Acorn? <laughs> Acorn just like, shh. Sorry, go ahead. Two-part question. Uh -huh. One, does she sleep in or outside? And two, does Grandfather Mountain have any plans to introduce a possum habitat to their outside, too? Um, that's a great question. So... She does, every night, she does have an outside enclosure. Um, now, she has a box in that outside enclosure where she'll den in. Um, they don't keep her inside anymore um, because she was, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, she was um, hanging on things and kind of scared the habitats when they walked into her habitat that she was kept in. Um, I don't know about on display. Um, they are... Like I said earlier, they are nocturnal. So even if, I mean, it's probably why she's about to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. But even if we were to have one on display for the public, I don't. I mean, all the animals on the mountain, they do have a choice whether they can be in their den or out. Um, we do not force any of the animals to come out to see the guest. Um, so it would be the same with the opossum. So if we did, more than likely, you just see an empty enclosure. But not that I'm aware of, it, of any plans. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you all for coming to BRAM today. Um, if you have questions, just let me know. I will be here for a while. If you want to take a picture with Acorn, um, and unfortunately I'm included in that picture, <laughs> um, I don't think I break too many cameras, but that's a risk you all will have to take. Um, but y'all can come up and get a picture with her if you want. Um, if you want to look up scat, we can look up scat um, because that sounds really interesting to me as well and I don't mind. <laughs> um, yeah, and thank you all. I hope you all have safe travels. I will keep the snow away on Saturday and tomorrow the best I can. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. I don't know. I'm probably... <laughs> Um, but I want to thank Bram for having us again. Love coming here. So thank you all. Thank you. You're welcome. And don't be shy. She doesn't smile.